What is up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be a packing 101 basic course video. I'm going to try and teach you as much as I can about packing without actually showing any packers in the video because I don't want it to get flagged or taken down. I will be mentioning like brands of packers that I would recommend, brands of packers that I wouldn't recommend, so you're welcome to go and Google them and do your own research um, on what they look like and everything like that. Just as a precautionary measure, I will not be showing any prosthetics in this actual video, uh, but we will be talking about packing. So first of all, I'm just going to go through some basic information about packing, like what packing is, uh, why people pack, uh, like the different types of packers and things like that. And then I put up a question poll on my Instagram story a couple days ago and let you guys ask whatever questions you had about packing. And I picked a few of my favorites from the questions that were asked there and I'm gonna try and answer them here in this video. All right, so first things first, we're just gonna talk about what packing is. Uh, packing is basically the process that uh, a lot of trans masculine people go through in order to kind of create the illusion of having a bulge in our pants. So there are different ways to pack. A lot of people start off with the simplest and easiest way, which is just balling up a pair of socks and stuffing it down into your boxer briefs. Um, that's probably the cheapest and easiest way to get started with packing and kind of get a feel for how it looks, um, how big or how small you want your package to be, how to get it to stay in place and not move around. A lot of people like bobby pin it into place. Once you have kind of gotten a feel for like what it's like seeing yourself with a bulge, that's when people tend to branch out and they will start buying like actual packers. So there are a few different types of packers. There's soft packers, which is just used for like daily use. Uh, you can't use them to, for sex. You can't use them as a stand to pee device. It's literally just something that sits in your pants and gives you the appearance of a bulge. A couple good brands that I would recommend if you're just looking for like a cheap starter soft packer. Trans Guy Supply is a good one. I know that Rodeo has some. And then Paxi's as well does like a bundle deal with their underwear as well as their soft packers. There's also what's called an STP or a stand to pee device. The name is pretty self-explanatory. It's a stand to pee device. So it allows you to pee while standing up. I have um, used STPs in the past and I do technically have an STP now. It's actually a three in one. Um, but yeah, basically an STP is a packer where there is um, like a cup that kind of fits to your anatomy and you literally just hold it up against you. Some companies make specific harnesses for their STP so it kind of fits snug up against you. Um, but if you don't have a harness and you're just wearing boxers, uh, you can just kind of press it up against yourself and then yeah, you literally just stand and you and you go to the bathroom with it. And then after SDPs, there are packers that are specifically just for sex, just for play and pleasure. Those you're not typically gonna be able to pack with on the daily just because most of the time they're gonna be erect. Uh, you can't really hide that unless you're tucking it into your waistband. But even then, it's pretty difficult to hide the fact that you have an erection. Some of my favorite brands to look for SDPs are Peacock. That's the one that I have right now. It's from Peacock. Real Magic has some great prosthetics, but they are on the pricier side. Free time has some good STPs. I don't really recommend Free Tom for anything other than STPs just because in my experience their packers are a bit too bulky and just not natural feeling for me. I don't really like their stuff. Definitely definitely recommend Peacock and then as far as brands for play and pleasure packers, again Real Magic, great stuff. MSO has some great stuff but they are on the pricier side. I would say probably the two most expensive companies are going to be Real Magic and MSO. By the way, I'm going to link all of these websites down in the description below. Feel free to go check them out and see for yourself. Oh, and there's also like these kind of combination type packers. Uh, like I said earlier, I have a three in one from Peacock. Uh, I believe it's the Peacock Gen 3S. And what it means when they say it's a three in one, it means that the packer is literally supposed to be like universally used. You can use it as a daily packer, you can use it as an STP, and you can also use it for sex. So typically they will be a little bit on the smaller side so that you can pack with them daily. Um, obviously uh, they'll be hollow on the inside and they will have that little cup so that you can use it as an STP. And then in order for you to use it for like pleasure or for sex, um, they will oftentimes come with like an erection rod or some sort of filling that you can insert into the like shaft 
of the packer uh, and that's what keeps it erect during sex. I have always kind of like leaned towards getting three-in-ones mainly because um, I don't pack often but when I do buy packers I want them to be available to me no matter what I need them for if that makes sense like I don't want to have to buy three separate packers for three separate things I would rather just invest my money in a good packer that is flexible and can be used for like a wide variety of things. Okay, so now that we've covered like the basics of what packing is and what types of packers there are, I'm gonna go ahead and answer some of the questions that you guys sent to me on Instagram. If you're not already, go ahead and follow my Instagram as well as my TikTok. Following my Instagram and my TikTok is a great way to keep up with this channel and just kind of like get real-time updates on everything. So the first question that I wanna answer is, uh, how do you get comfortable wearing a packer? I kind of already addressed this earlier in the video when I was talking about packing with like a, a bundled up sock, but that's really how I got comfortable with packing. Obviously when I first came out, I didn't have the money or the knowledge to go out and buy like an actual packer. So I did actually start out with just a rolled up ball of socks. And like I said, you can just bobby pin it to your boxers so they don't move, they stay in one spot. And it's just something to get used to. You don't have to wear it out in public if you're not comfortable with that yet. But wear it around the house, you know, look at yourself in your underwear, gas yourself up in the mirror, wear it with sweatpants, with your favorite pair of jeans, and just kind of get used to the feeling of seeing it and feeling it on you. And eventually, it'll just start to feel like second nature. This one actually made me laugh. This person asked, how do people wear an SDP and not get pee on themselves after going. And I believe somebody else asked a similar question to this. Do you have to rinse an STP packer after using it? And if so, how do you do that discreetly in a public bathroom? These two questions are some of the reasons why I was so nervous about using an STP when I first got one. I think it's a mixture of finding the right packer for you and finding an STP that really fits your anatomy and has the right technology to prevent spills and leakage and things like that. And then also just practice. When I was first learning how to use my current SCP, I would use it in the shower, I would use it at home all the time, or I would you know, use it at a friend's house. Places that you're comfortable enough to where if an accident happens, you're not stranded in the bathroom of McDonald's in the middle of a mall. So for an SDP, it's really important that you make sure that the packer is lined up with you perfectly. You kind of want to lean forward a little bit when you're using it, uh, make sure that everything is nice and tight, there's not any space for like a leakage or like a little spill to come out or anything like that. Lean forward a little bit and control your flow. And then once you're done, you have to do the pee shake. When you're finished peeing with an SDP, you gotta give it a little jiggle. You gotta get the rest of the dots out. I don't know if this is like a common thing, but I always took a little bit of toilet paper and just like dabbed off the end of the SDP. If you've graduated from your bathroom and you're ready to try it in public, I really do recommend trying it in the stall first. If you can, I would try and find like a family restroom or like one of those restrooms where it's just like a big one stall. But if you can't do that, go to the men's restroom and just try and use a stall. I wouldn't recommend using it at a urinal first thing because if you haven't quite figured out how to hold everything up against you while also keeping your pants up and like keeping your ass crack out of the view of random strangers, I just don't think it's a good idea to go to the urinal first. I really do recommend using it in the stall. Also, you don't have to rinse the SDP after every single usage. Obviously, at the end of the day, whenever you've been using the SDP, whenever you've been using any packer really, I do recommend that you like rinse it off or wash it, especially if it's an SDP, like you don't want that shit just like marinating in there, you know? So I do recommend washing it at the end of the day, but you don't have to wash it like every time you go piss. Somebody asked, how do you make the packer not bulge too much? This is a pretty simple question to like answer. Uh, it's a pretty easy problem to solve because packers are literally customizable. You can literally pick the size, the color, the type that you get. So if you're worried about your bulge being too bulgy, it's pretty easy to just start off real small. I think the smallest size packer I've ever seen was like two and a half inches long. Start off small, kind of get a sense of okay, I like the size, okay, I think I could go bigger. And it's just, like I said, it's a good way to get used to packing and get used to the feeling of having something in your pants. Somebody asked me what the best low to like mid price range packer would be. Um, I would definitely recommend checking out like Rodeo, uh, Paxis, and Trans Guy Supply. They have some really good quality, but still relatively cheap, small, soft packers, as well as some SDPs, I believe. You can get underwear that's designed specifically for that packer with the packer. It's good to buy some packing briefs, and it's even better to buy packing briefs from the same company that you bought your packer from. It just makes the whole process a lot smoother. Someone asked, how do you deal with movement? 
uh, I feel like mine's moving up in non-packing underwear with a pouch. Again, this kind of circles back around to what I was saying earlier, buying a bundle deal from Paxis or Rodeos or anything like that. If you're not comfortable using packing briefs or like packing boxes, there is this product called the Joey Pouch, which is basically just like a little pouch that you put your packer in and then you just like pin it to the front of your uh, waistband and it just keeps everything in place that way. There are some companies like Real Magic and I believe Emisil as well. Their products, supposedly you don't need a harness to use them. They have like a flap that you can customize and it literally just presses right up against you and they are supposed to provide you with like a type of adhesive or like a glue that you apply to this and then you literally just stick it onto you and it's supposed to stay like without any help. It's supposed to stay on for like several days at a time, um, maybe even over a week. I'm not sure. I've never had a packer like that just because I don't really trust it and it's a bit out of my price range. If you don't have, you know, one of those adhesive type packers, uh, I would definitely recommend investing in a Joey pouch um, or some sort of harness or packing underwear because that's just going to keep everything more secure instead of you just pressing it against your skin in your like regular boxers and you know hoping for the best this person asked me an interesting question they said are there any packers you recommend that don't have that oily feeling to them i know exactly what you're talking about and i think the oily feeling doesn't have anything to do with the packer itself but it has something to do with how you're storing it because my soft packer and even my three-in-one packer that i have i used to just leave my packers in my underwear drawer i would like rest them on top of like a pair of boxers or something and I would just like close the door and just like forget about them till I needed them. And they would get this like weird oily feeling and they would just feel kind of like damp almost and just really sticky and it was just not a good time. And I actually found out from a friend of mine that Peacock has these like silk bags that they deliver their products in. So I started storing literally everything that I use for my packers in this silk bag. Uh, actually, let me grab it for you guys. This is the bag that Peacock sends with like your products and everything. Uh, it's just like a silk or satin bag with like a drawstring on top. It's surprisingly like roomy. I have a lot of stuff in here. Literally everything I could ever need is in this bag right here. And I found that ever since I started storing my stuff in this bag, literally just put it in the bag, put it in a drawer, forget about it. Ever since I started doing that, the oily feeling is gone. And another thing that I found out that helps, if you just want to like freshen them up, something that I found out that helps, it's a bit weird. I used to use Summer's Eve like body powder. It kind of soaks up any excess moisture and it prevents things from sticking to your packer while you're using it. And I found that that really helps just keep everything a bit cleaner, just makes it a bit more convenient. This person asked me the best and the worst packer I've ever used. So again, like I said, my favorite all-time packer that I've used is the one that I have right now. It's the Peacock Gen 3S. Love it. Uh, literally the only complaint that I had about that one is the paint job comes off a little fast for my liking. Like I said, I've had it for like, I think two years now. So obviously there's gonna be some signs of wear and tear, but I do wish that the paint job had stayed a little bit longer. Best packer I've ever used hands down is the Peacock Gen 3S. Worst packer I've ever used was the Free Tom four-in-one packer. It was just no good for anything. I couldn't pack with it because it was too bulky. It was supposed to be five and a half inches, but I actually measured it when I got it, and the actual like shaft of the packer was three and a half inches, and the extra two inches came from the balls. Like the nut sack was two inches thick, and the STP just did not function properly at all. The cup did not fit my anatomy. I literally had to like hold the packer underneath me to catch anything. Uh, so it was just really inconvenient to use. I got rid of it within like the first two months of having it just because you could not fucking use it for anything. Uh, I don't know if Free Tom has improved their products or if they have like new stuff out that's better than their old stuff because I did get that packer as my first ever like four in one or three in one I guess and that was in like 2018 so I don't know if they if they do a better job now but from personal experience I would not recommend Free Tom. My dream packer is probably one from Real Magic or one from Imisil just because they are super realistic, super duper high quality. They have just always been a touch out of my price range and I just don't feel comfortable blowing 600 to 800 dollars on a packer especially because sometimes packing makes my bottom dysphoria worse sometimes it does more harm than good so i just don't feel comfortable spending that much money on something that i might not use as frequently as i would 
uh, you know, like the ones that I've had for years and years. If you have any like experiences with any packing company, like, uh, you know, if you use Free Time and you had a good experience or if you use Peacock and had a bad experience or whatever the case may be, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to see some recommendations from other companies. Maybe there are companies out there that I've never heard of that you guys enjoy and I'm sure it would be very helpful to anybody else watching this video to kind of check on what other people think and not just my opinion. <laughs> But yeah, that is all I'm gonna go over in this video. If you guys liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below what you liked about it, what you didn't like. Give me some feedback down below. Uh, I'll do my best to answer all the comments I can. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, please go ahead and do that. It doesn't mean anything to you, but it means the world to me. God damn, leave me alone, you bitch. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see y'all in the next video.